All right. We are talking protein and we're talking building and anti-aging and generically uh, referred to as anabolism. All living things are made up of peptides. Peptides can be best thought of as little tiny chunks of amino acids. And then proteins can be thought of as lots of peptides or complex peptides. All living things can be identified by their peptides. All living things are what they are by virtue of their peptides. When we say peptides and proteins are life or they're the stars of the drama of life and biology, what we mean is proteins are what give all of life its specific characteristics. A life form, be it a bacteria or a bumblebee or a stalk of broccoli, is what it is, a stalk of broccoli is what it is, a bumblebee is what it is, a man is what it is, what we are because of our combination of peptides. Peptides are are, are, are our identifying feature. Now hear this, folks. This is very, very, very important, especially for you guys dealing with autoimmunity. Incompletely digested proteins, incompletely digested proteins that have not been broken down into their component parts, amino acids, Incompletely digested proteins that have been, they're left at the peptide stage are never, ever, ever supposed to get into the blood. To the body, peptides in the blood mean an invasion has occurred into the very inner sanctum of the body. Remember, peptides are life. So when the immune system sees these peptides in the blood that have gotten in through the digestive tract and through poor digestion of proteins, it thinks an attack has, has occurred. It thinks a life form has entered into the blood. The blood is the sacred inner sanctum of the body. It's the biological Ark of the Covenant. It is the Holy of Holies. It is where the life force is stored. And protein and peptides that have invaded into this, into this uh, sacred space of the blood initiate all kinds of red alert alarm reactions. Peptides in the blood mean an invasion, or at least a potential invasion to the body, by a foreign living entity. Once a food, i.e. a foreign peptide, gets into the blood, a red alert goes out, and the body's defense department just jumps into action. Of course, the body's defense department is the immune system. That means peptides in the blood from incompletely digested protein activate defenses, activate immunity. That, my friends, is called hypersensitive, a hypersensitive immune system, and that is one of the major causes, the major cause of autoimmune diseases. All immune reactions, even clotting blood, which is a sign of an immune reaction. For you guys on blood-thinning medicines, and, and a lot of you guys are on blood-thinning medicines, you should know that sticky, clotting, clogging, inflamed blood is a sign of an activated immune system and very likely secondary to invasion through incompletely di- from incompletely digested proteins. Living things are not supposed to be floating in the blood. And when the immune system sees peptides, it thinks living things are in the blood. Enemy living things, foreign living things. The immune system is constantly on the lookout for invaders. And when a food peptide or any other peptide gets into the blood, if it's not recognized, an immediate immune defensive reaction is initiated to isolate and destroy that peptide. Peptides in the blood represent a mortal invasion into the body. When the immune system sees peptides, it spots them, it identifies them, and then it starts to generate. This is so cool, guys. When a peptide is in the blood and the immune system sees this peptide in the blood, it initiates bomb-making, chemical missile-making. This is what the immune system is. It's chemical missiles. In addition to scouts that are looking around for foreign invaders, the immune system is also composed of chemical war, chemical uh, war weapons, chemical missiles, and high-tech weaponry, and even cooler These high-tech missiles are specifically and intelligently designed to match the enemy. There are specific missiles that are designed, that are structured to match the specific enemy. A specific enemy generates a specific type of missile creation, chemical missile creation. It's an intelligent system. This is amazing. So you've got an immune system that spots a peptide, it's snuck into the blood, somehow gotten into the blood, probably through a leaky gut problem, which we talked about yesterday. And when the immune system sees this peptide, it immediately initiates the production of missiles and bombs that are specifically designed for that specific peptide. And they're specifically designed to kill that peptide, to eliminate that peptide, to somehow isolate that peptide from, from getting, in, uh, 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 getting into the tissues through the blood. 
If this happens just once, this is probably not a big deal. It happens twice, three times, a couple times. It's not a big deal. But if you have leaky gut syndrome, if you've got holes in your gut and you're still eating the same kinds of food and you're not digesting your protein, this can happen all the time. This can happen every day. This can happen multiple times a day, every day in a chronic fashion. And over time, what can happen is there's going to be so much immune activity, so many of these missiles, so many of these bombs, so much surrounding going on. And by the way, surrounding means fibers. Not good in the blood, obviously. It means fibers and, and different kinds of cells surrounding that, that little sneaky invader. The net result is a big, big mess. Now, when we have a, this is really where it gets to be tricky and very important and underrecognized as well. We are peptides too. We are made of proteins too. Our human body is composed of peptides and proteins. Our organs are all made up of the same kinds of peptides that make up foods and all other living things. There's only a certain amount of peptides in all of life, and they're very similar peptides that are found in your hamburger and in your steak and in your soy and in your other kinds of foods that are uh, there are peptides that are similar to peptides in your thyroid and peptides in your pancreas and, and peptides in your kidney and peptides in your bone and peptides in your muscle and peptides everywhere. Everywhere. We're basically the same kind of stuff that we're eating. And when the immune system becomes intelligently, uh, intelligently creates a missile specific for peptides in the blood, guess what? Very often, your thyroid peptides and other organ peptides can be affected as well. I'll tell you what I mean when we come back from our break. I am Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. We are back on the bright side. Our number today and every day is 855-660-4261. If you want to learn more about the longevity products, you can head over to my website, brightsideben.com, or you can give the Bright Side Ben phone team a call at 866-735-2470. So we're going over this whole autoimmune disease peptide connection, and uh, the whole idea is you got incomplete digested proteins. These incomplete digested, incompletely digested proteins which are left in the form of peptides, sneak into the blood. In the blood, they initiate an immune reaction. Now, if this just happens occasionally, that's not that big a deal. But if it happens over and over and over again, you've got this immune system that has been designed to attack specific peptides from whatever kind of foods you're eating. And now these specifically designed bombs and chemical missiles that are attacking these peptides over and over again, well, they're specifically designed to, to attack a specific kind of peptide. And unfortunately... The specific kind of peptide that they're attacking from the hamburger or the soy or whatever food you're eating very often is the exact same specific kind of peptide that is in our organs and in our glands. And when you have these specially designed, intelligent chemical missiles, they're called antibodies, by the way. Uh, you've heard of IgG maybe or IgE or IgF or IgM. These are all different kinds of antibodies, and they're specifically designed to attack specific peptides Unfortunately, our thyroid is made up of those same peptides and our bones and our muscles and the rest of our body, our joints, our digestive lining. These are all made up of peptides, the same kind of peptides that are in food. And these peptides are found throughout your body and they have the same structure, exactly the same structure as the peptides in wheat and in grains and in soy and in various kinds of food. So if we eat wheat or we eat grains or we eat foods that are not completely digested and you have leaks in your gut, these wheat and grain and soy and milk and egg and various protein peptides get into your blood. Well, your immune system was going to address the problem by attacking the peptide. However... The peptide that's found in the wheat is also found in your nerves, and it's also found in your bone, and it's also found in your thyroid. And when the immune system attacks the wheat peptide, your nerves and your bone and your thyroid are likely to be attacked as well. They're the same peptides, and the immune system is only looking for peptides. If you eat soy or beans or eggs or steak or dairy or cheese or anything that has protein in it, or it's composed of protein, and it's incompletely digested, and peptides enter into your bloodstream, you are running a significant risk of having your own peptides, which may be in your thyroid or your muscle or your nerves or your tear ducts or your joints or your pancreas or anywhere else in your body. You're running a severe risk of having them attacked as well. This is called autoimmune disease. 
And it doesn't matter where it shows up. It's irrelevant where it shows up. It doesn't matter if it's in your nerves. It doesn't matter if it's in your pancreas. It doesn't matter if it's in your tear ducts or in your skin or in your thyroid or anywhere else. That's just where it's showing up, people. That's the result. The problem is in the peptides. The problem is in the incomplete digestion of protein in combination with leaky gut and overall malnutrition, which is usually the case by the time this disease shows up. And if you don't believe me, folks, check this out. If you have an, uh, an autoimmune disease, if you have multiple sclerosis, if you have uh, Hashimoto's thyroid, if you have Crohn's disease, if you have any flavor autoimmune disease, try this. Stop eating fast for a couple of days. Watch what happens. All foods have peptides, and by the time you have an autoimmune disease, you're probably reacting to multiple peptides. But once you start to correct the problem by eliminating foods, improving uh, enzymatic digestion of protein with apple cider vinegar, which is super important for the digestion of protein by using digestive enzymes with bile salts. And by the way, digestive enzymes are stupendously important, as are bile salts. Did you know bile salts, which we talk about as being important for absorbing fats, they're also important for absorbing protein, and so is pancreatic enzymes. The combination of fasting, doing the elimination diet where you eliminate specific foods, using apple cider vinegar, using digestive enzymes, using bile salts, using pancreatin will guaranteed make you feel better and even eliminate your symptoms if you are dealing with autoimmunity. No one, this is so important, people, no one has to be condemned to an autoimmune disease if you understand the mechanism. Autoimmune diseases are digestive diseases largely via this entire peptide connection. And nobody's talking about this. So just try it. I don't want anybody taking my word for anything. I'm just giving you ideas here, people. You guys have to test things out yourself. They say knowledge is power. Well, it's not really power. Knowledge is potential power. Action is power. So when you hear these ideas, take action. Try it yourself. Fast today. If you've got an autoimmune disease, if you have rheumatoid arthritis or psoriasis or Hashimoto's or whatever, try today. Stop eating today. Guaranteed you're going to feel better. And then start to isolate your food, uh, isolate your digestive, sy- uh, digestive symptoms and connect them with foods. And then eliminate those foods. Guaranteed you're going to feel better. And then start using your ultimate enzymes from longevity. Use your apple cider vinegar. Go get some pancreatin. Make sure you're on the nightly essence probiotics. Do everything you can do to support digestive health and wellness. You will feel better. All right, we're going to be talking about uh, the hormone action of peptides. Peptides act like little communication molecules. This is one one of the reasons they're so important, maybe the most important uh, function of peptides. Insulin is a peptide. Thyroid hormone is a peptide. Many of our digestive secretions are peptides. Appetite suppression and appetite stimulation depend on peptides. Growth hormone is a peptide. And all of these things, insulin, thyroid hormone, growth hormone, they all depend on on dietary protein, the protein we're getting into our bodies through foods, and protein absorption. We'll be discussing all of that shortly. And then I want to talk about the second kind of enzyme, a second kind of protein that's important, and that is a digest or all enzymes, metabolic enzymes as well as digestive enzymes. But before we get into that, I want to talk a little bit about peptides and skincare. Some of you know I've been doing skincare for many years. I've been in the skincare business since 1983. I started working for Blistex when I was in pharmacy school. I worked for the guy who invented Blistex, actually. And my job was to create formulas for Dr. Jones, and I'd come in after work or after school, and uh, and there'd be a stack of formulas that back in those days people were typing. There were no computers. It was 1983. And my job was to come in and make formulas. So I learned skincare at a very young age, and I learned it from a true genius. And I've been doing skincare for many years. I have my own skincare company, Sanita Skincare Products, and I know a lot about skincare. And one of the things, uh, if you guys are using skincare products, and who isn't using skincare products, but especially connoisseurs of skincare products, know about peptides in skincare. Peptides, the same, very same peptides that we've been talking about, little chunks of protein have for the last couple of years been the hottest ingredients in the skincare world. Not a day goes by when I don't hear from an ingredient salesperson trying to sell me the latest and greatest skincare peptide for moisturization, for anti-aging, for healing, for collagen, for, for tightening wrinkles, among other numerous skincare and skin health functions. 
Now, despite their power and their potency and their relevance to skin health, as far as in, uh, ingredients go, peptides are, are really, really tiny little structures, tiny little molecules. They're super potent. They're super important. But from a molecular sense, they're very tiny. And this makes them really tricky to isolate and to purify and to manufacture at the manufacturing level where your skincare co- uh, product companies are buying them from. Skincare companies that make skincare products, they buy raw materials from peptide manufacturers, and peptide manufacturing is a very tricky business because these peptides are so small. All right, we'll continue this discussion when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got a couple lines open for you. We welcome your phone calls. Give us a shout. We'll try to get to as many calls as we can. Give us a shout early at 855-660-4261. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. guys want to try fasting for autoimmunity, if you've uh, got an autoimmune condition, now you're all interested in fasting, make sure you're using nutritional supplements while you're fasting. Make sure you're using the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Make sure you're using vitamin C and make sure you're using the B-complex. Now, if you're fasting just to uh, clean out your system, you don't have an autoimmune problem, it's probably not as relevant for you to use supplements if you're just going to fast for a day or two. But if you plan on fasting regularly because of you have an autoimmune problem, you want to make sure that you're well-nourished, especially with immune-boosting nutrients. This is very important because the immune system, uh, nutritional supplements are so important for helping the immune system function. All right, let's see uh, if I want to say anything more about peptides and skin care. You know, we'll do this on... uh, Let's see. We'll do this on our next program. We'll continue talking about peptides and skincare, and then we will uh, we'll talk about enzymes and digestive enzymes. And we'll talk about Dr. Edwin Howell, who's considered one of the grandfathers of enzyme therapy, of food enzyme therapy. We'll talk about Dr. Edwin Howell's work. If you're interested in reading a good book about enzymes, his book is called Enzyme Nutrition, written about I think in the 1980s, some sometime in the 1980s. Dr. Edwin Edward Howell, H O W E L L. We will talk about Dr. Howell's work in peptides and skincare. As we continue talking about protein and bodybuilding and anabolism and anti-aging, all at, all as it has to do with helping build bones uh, if you're dealing with osteoporosis. And then, I, you know, I also want to talk a little bit about Fosamax and why you don't want to use Fosamax if you're already on it. But we can do all that next week as we continue talking about nutrition for osteoporosis on the bright side. Time to hit our phones, and we do have a couple lines open for you. And try to get on board early. Don't wait till the last minute so we can get to as many calls as we can at 855-660-4261. Uh, before we get to the calls, I want to remind you that I have a blog, pharmacistben.com, which we update regularly. And also, if you're on the blog, try to, uh, if you encourage you to check out our newsletter, sign up for our newsletter, which we'll be starting here in the next couple of months or so. Okay, 855-660-4261. Welcome to the Bright Side, Marshall. What's going on, buddy? Hey, uh, it's, I've got a question about uh, deadly medical procedures, and I okay. find it pretty invasive. I, I'm trying to get my other shoulder operated on. I know that they're not going to do uh, orthoscope. They're just going to slice me open and clean out all the bad parts like they did on the other side. But they're trying. I, they got three doctors on me, and they finally sent me to this heart guy. I did the treadmill. Heart? Ultrasound, did you say heart? EKGs. Yeah, heart. Okay. They they don't want to put me down without having my heart checked out. But I already did the treadmill ultrasound, several EKGs. My blood pressure ranges from like 130 to 170 when they take it on me, and now they want to stick a wire up my crotch and Great. check my heart with a yeah angiography. <laughs> How old are you, Marshall? <laughs> Fifty. I think I talked to you. Your voice sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah, I've talked to you several times. Yeah. On the air or, or in my business. Uh, I once at the business and a few times when you were at KSCO. Oh, oh you're you're in Santa Cruz. Yeah. I, I remember. I, did we meet when I was out there? Uh, we didn't. No, but I, I'd love we to meet We talked. You. Okay, good. Yeah, we All talked right, so lot. here's the yeah. deal, Marshall. Uh, it sounds like you just have some general degeneration in your body. And first thing, even before you have your surgical procedure, if you do indeed end up with a surgical procedure, you got to start working on the entire system. And that means just general health care. Number one, I don't know about your digestive system, but that's the, always the first thing to focus on. If stuff starts getting into the blood, as we've been talking about for the last couple of days, if start, stuff starts getting into the blood through a leaky gut, which can happen secondary to malnutrition or secondary to food toxicity or allergens, then you're gonna, it's going to be... Yeah. 
Uh, alcohol can do it. That's right. Alcohol can ca- can inflame the digestive lining and cause leaky gut. All, all of these things can be problematic. By the way, a little bit of alcohol is not the end of the world. It's just over and over and over again. Yeah, I only drink on weekends now, yeah. Okay, well, it's the point is, is that it's not at the end of the world to have a little wine or a little vodka or a little alcohol every once in a while. But over and over again, yes, that can lead to leaky gut syndrome. Once things get into the blood, then it becomes very difficult to, to start to access the body's built-in healing processes. The body's got built-in healing processes, but if it's diverted... By trying to take care of stuff that is snuck into the blood, it makes it a lot harder. So number one, focus on digestive health and wellness. The neat thing about digestive enzymes, which we'll be talking about here uh, in the next uh, next couple of shows, the neat thing about digestive uh, enzymes is... The, the, um, the well, let me just finish cell? real quick. Hang on, Marshall. Okay. Let me just finish this thought real quick. Before uh, The neat thing about digestive enzymes is that not only are they going to help you digest your food and help you improve leaky gut, but they also have wonderful anti-inflammatory benefits for the blood and, as well as for the shoulder. Uh, there's no such thing as shoulder damage or any kind of joint damage that it, is occurring without in inflammation. There, hang on. Hang on just a second, Marshall. Okay. That's occurring without inflammation. So when you have inflammation, That's going to make the healing process much more difficult to access. The inflammatory process is largely initiated by food. So patching up that digestive system can go a long way, number one, towards uh, reducing inflammation, and number two, towards helping you digest food so you don't have those peptides that are sneaking into the blood. Go ahead, buddy. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Okay. So you're talking about – I I, I wrote down apple cider vinegar. Is that going to help? Yeah, heck yes, it will help. Apple cider vinegar is very, very important yeah, for the digestion. How do you take it? Well, hang on, my man. Let me finish. My, let me get my <laughs> thoughts out here. Uh, digestive or apple cider vinegar activates your digestive enzymes. Number one, and stomach acid is very, very important for the digestion of protein. That's what we're talking about here: is digestion of protein. Apple cider vinegar is key. Digestive enzymes are key, but digestive enzymes also have anti-inflammatory properties. I'd be using the nightly essence probiotics as well. All of this is in terms of working on the digestion digestive system. Now, you're also going to want to work on the uh, inflammation and the immune system, and there's some really neat anti-inflammatory nutrients that you can use. Vitamin C and vitamin E. Vitamin C and E are my two Uh, favorite anti-inflammatory nutrients. I'm going to put you on hold just a second here, Marshall. Vitamin C and vitamin E are my two favorite anti-inflammatory nutrients. Uh, You want about 1,000 to 5,000 milligrams of vitamin C a day, and you want uh, around 400 international units, IU a day, of vitamin E a day. There's there's many more anti-inflammatory nutrients, but those are two really great ones. And then make sure that you're getting on your whey protein, Marshall. Do I have Marshall here? Marshall, make sure you're using whey protein for building tissue. When you have a shoulder problem, you've got basically got a connective tissue problem, and using whey protein can be a great strategy. With enzymes, with apple cider vinegar, can be a great strategy for helping build connective tissue. Go ahead, buddy. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, what do you think about them sticking a wire in my crotch? I don't. Check I, out I think that's awful. They already did these. I think that's awful. I would be doing everything I could do it's to avoid awful. that. Yeah. I would avoid I'm that if you I'm can. I'm going to deny it. Yeah. Yeah. Do the work on the digestive system. Use the use the digestive enzymes. Everything we just talked about in the anti-inflammatory nutrients. Stay in touch, Marshall. I'd like to hear back from you. Okay, buddy. Yeah, you too. Have a great day in Santa Cruz. All right. Let's see. Uh, James in Texas. Our number, by the way, eight five five six six zero forty two sixty one. And we do have a couple lines open for you, James in Texas. What's going on? Yeah, Ben. Uh, you're talking about autoimmune disease and leaky gut this morning. Yes. Um, I've got my naturopath is suspecting leaky gut, but in my condition, it seems to be when, uh, for example, when I used to drink whole raw milk, um, I would get, well, th- let me just backtrack. When I got out of boot camp in the military after a battery of vaccines, I remember it like it was yesterday. When I walked out of the galley after eating a meal, Every single meal, I would have mucus and phlegm mm-hmm. coming out of my bronchioles, my sinuses, yeah. my esophagus, and um, it started out more watery, but over the years, it became more viscous. And for Classic. 23 years, after every single meal, I would have this almost like an allergic attack. Classic and, reaction. Classic and, reaction. And anytime, so, you, anytime you're snotty or mucusy or have any kind of thickness in your body, you want to think about an allergic reaction. You're right on, James. How can I help you? So, so, so uh, I started switching to whole foods, natural foods, and uh, we're, uh, we were in taking the, the best raw milk we could get our hands on, and I was uh, noticed that I was still having a reaction to the okay. raw milk. Okay, hang on, James. We've got to take a break. Can you hang okay. tight? Yep. Hang tight through the break. Okay, good. If you're on hold, stay there, and uh, if you want to give us a shout, you can give, it, uh, give us a call at 855-660-4261. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You are listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this.
right, we are back on the bright side. James in Texas, uh, what's going on, man? How can I help you, buddy? Okay, so um, you talked about uh, leaky gut being related to proteins and peptides, but in the case of when I was drinking milk, if I made raw milk kefir, which is basically raw milk without the lactose sugar, um, I actually had the opposite response where I actually had um, my sinuses open up and I had had anti-inflammatory nice. response to kefir, whereas I would have the mucus production with whole milk. Well, so there's a lot of differences between whole milk and kefir, and probably the most significant difference is the bacteria. So what you're doing when you're using kefir instead of whole milk is you're giving yourself nice bacteria for your gut. Okay. And so you're supporting gut health. Uh, you know, when I say, I didn't say peptides are related to uh, autoimmune, or related to leaky gut syndrome. I was saying that when you have leaky gut syndrome, peptides can sneak into the blood. So it's not that the leaky gut syndrome is caused by a problem with digesting proteins, although that doesn't help. The problem is when the peptides sneak into the blood, they bypass the cells because you have holes in the gut, and that comes from general malnutrition. Now, your, your issue with kefir sounds to me like you're getting, taking advantage of the bacteria in the kefir, which are not in the raw milk. Does well, that make sense? I did, yeah, I did notice that when I gave up all grains for a time, I eliminated yeah. all grains. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I've since learned that um, the gliadin actually uh, activates zonulin proteins and causes yeah. leaky gut no matter what your genetic uh, expression. Yeah. Yeah, gliadin so, is a protein. Gliadin is an incompletely digested protein. It's a and peptide. When I, gave up, when I gave up all grains, not only did my leaky gut go away, which also goes away with fasting like you mentioned, yeah. but it, it, um, it went away... My indoor and outdoor allergies disappeared just by like giving that? up grains. How do you like that, man? Uh, uh, James, do you realize how important that is? What a what a juicy nugget of information well, you, you just know, gave you know, the I listeners. Haven't had, I haven't had to take Claritin D for three years ever since giving up wheat. It's amazing. It's all based on this idea of immune system load. You know, it doesn't seem like what you're eating is going to be related to your hay fever, but it is because the immune system becomes overloaded like a straw that breaks the camel's back. And once you strain out your digestive immune system uh, problems, your immune system can handle pollen, and you don't have hay fever, and you don't have indoor and outdoor allergies. Thank you so much for sharing that, James. I've been saying that for years, but it's so nice to hear somebody who's actually experienced that. Let me reinforce one more thing that you mentioned. You know, there's something innate that God put in us to make us realize that, you know, Pollen is everywhere, yeah. and we shouldn't be reacting to right. it like it's a biological invader. You got it, James. You I need mean, your own like, radio it, show, James. It, and, and it used to it used to bug me. I'm like, why am I? You know, I moved to Austin, and I started getting ear infections, and my allergies kept increasing. But I was like, this does not make sense. It doesn't make sense. We grew and up with like, pollen. It, it's like allergies are are like your control panel alarm going off, telling you there's something wrong with your endocrine system. With your immune and, system. Yeah. With not right. so much your endocrine. Your immune system. That's oh, right. That's and even if it looks like thing. it's hay fever and it's coming from outside, the problem is inside. And you know what else, James? This is where we have our power. If we say the, the tree has the power, or the pollen or the plant has the power, we become impotent. There's nothing we can do except hack down the trees or take drugs. But if we say it's our immune system that's the problem, we start to explore our own biochemistry, then we have tremendous power over our health challenges. I appreciate you sharing that, James. Thank you yeah, so have much. You, have you ever heard of anyone else having this kind of reaction to sugars? Well, I'm not sure you're having a reaction to sugars, but when you have a reaction to sugars, it's not an immune, it's not an allergy type reaction. It's a bacteria reaction because bacteria feed on those sugars that are in the gut and they start to ferment. Uh, They start to ferment different foods and you get gases that are released. So it's more of a a probiotic or a a gut bacteria problem than an allergy problem. Allergy problems, immune system problems are only to proteins and peptides. So maybe like a bacterial overgrowth? Yes, exactly. Fermentation, bacterial overgrowth. Maybe endotoxins are involved? All of that. Endotoxemia, absolutely. Laying off the sugars, and that means all kinds of sugars because right. uh, complex sugars or or um, or simple sugars. Bacteria love them like we do. And bacteria love protein, by the way, too, and that can create a problem as well. We'll be talking about that next week. i got to move on, James, but thank you so much. That was a very valuable call. I appreciate it. Take care, buddy. All right, that was really cool. I, I love it when you guys experience this, the things that we talk about on the program every day when you experience it for yourselves this is all theory that i'm giving you but when you try this stuff in your life that's when it becomes practical and relevant and very very important all right uh, kathy in texas welcome to the bright side what's going on kathy do we have kathy oh hello i didn't hear your name there was a, a fuzzy sound hi my name's kathy i love your program thank you um you're talking about autoimmune stuff this is a little different but i think it might be related okay um i'm 59. I have a sore on the top tip of my nose. Okay. About two millimeters long. It's been there for okay. about two years. I used wait, wait. To your your sore has been there for two years? Yes. 
That's not good. It hasn't healed? A, I went to a dermatologist. They took a hole punch on the right side of my nose, which, of course, left a scar. Oh. Um, well, there was nothing there, they said, but sore is still there. I used Fudex on it in December, and it kind of cleared it up, and then it came back. Now I'm they, using hydrogen peroxide. Well, that's not going to help it. you. Did they do a biopsy on it? They did, and there was nothing there, but I okay. noticed... I still have that growth on the right side of my nose. It's a, like a, not a round bubble. It's like an oval bubble on the right side of the sore. Okay, it sounds like cells aren't growing. Whenever you have, whenever you have, I know what you're talking about, that little oval bubble. Whenever you have bubbles or cysts or things that are raised on the skin, you want to think that of cells that are growing out of control. The, the process of right. cell growth on the skin is very complicated, and a lot of things have to go right, and a lot of things can go wrong that can mess up how cells divide and grow, as we've talked about in the past and we'll talk about in the future. So anytime cells are growing or you got growths on the skin, whether they're bubbles or cysts or whatever they are, uh, you want to think about cells that are growing out of control. And there's only one reason why cells grow out of control, and that's called inflammation. And inflammation right. means immunity. So once again, right. we got an immune system problem. And so folks, right. listen up. If you have growths that are appearing on the skin, think of your immune system. It may not look like it's an immune system problem, but it is because it involves inflammation and it involves how cells are dividing. Now, when you have an immune system problem, remember, we're always simplifying here on the bright side, okay? Keep it simple, stupid, K-I-S-S. Not that you're stupid, Kathy, but that's just the phrase. <laughs> keep it simple, stupid, right? Kiss. Uh -huh. So you want to keep it simple. Keeping it simple means when you have inflammation or when you have cells dividing out of control and you have inflammation, think immunity, think digestion. Now, Kathy, my dear, you're 59 years old. I'm not a psychic. I'm not a wizard. I'm, all, I'm here in Colorado. You're in Texas. I can't see you. Right. But I can tell I you, you got something percolating in the digestive system. You must have had it for years. Correct, Amundo, or not? Yes, you're right about that. And I, and I am using digestive enzymes, and I am using probiotics. Well, raw, well you're raw, on the right like, track, but as long as you... Something is still not happening. Yes, some, exactly. Something's still not there. So let's talk about a couple of strategies for you. The digestive enzymes are great, but here's the thing with digestive enzymes. You always need to dose yourself functionally with digestive enzymes. That means you've got to take as many as you need for you to notice improvement. So you may need okay. three digestive enzymes after a meal. You may need six digestive enzymes after meals. You may need 10 digestive enzymes after meals. So what you want to do is you want to start off by taking, say, two or three after meals and see how you feel. Oh, okay, I feel, I feel better. Let me try four. Oh, okay, four, I feel even better. Oh, let me try five. Oh, my gosh, five, I feel really good. And then I, you try six, and you say, well, I don't notice too much of a difference. Boom, you know you need five digestive enzymes. That's called functional dosing. You find out where and you benefit. Have right, you done that? Right. That's after I eat, not on an empty stomach. After you eat, not on an empty stomach, because we're okay. working on food processing here, okay? Gotcha. And make sure you're activating them with apple cider vinegar, all right? That's, right. that's the first thing you want to do. The next thing you want to do is get yourself on the nightly essence from Longevity, which is my favorite probiotic supplement, and take them liberally, generously. In fact, that alone can make a difference on the so for your okay. uh, uh, skin sores. I'd be using 80 billion units a day, and then with it, you want to make sure, not with it, but along with your uh, probiotics, you also want to make sure you're using fermented foods. Uh, miso, kimchi, tempeh, natto. Yeah, natto's really a like great. Fermented foods, you go crazy on the fermented foods. Yes, ma'am. That's perfect. Then you want to start using uh, uh, things like bile salts and uh, pancreatin, things that help support in a non-enzymatic fashion. Things that help support the digestive system. You can get bile. That's B-I-L-E. Bile salts at the uh, at a health food store. You can get something called pancreatin, which is pancreatic enzymes as well, right. yeah. and, and that'll help. You can also use uh, something called Swedish bitters. And Swedish bitters can help yeah, I don't stimulate. Know how to use those. You just use them after meals. They stimulate bile production and they'll also stimulate enzyme production as well. So both. Uh, and then just uh, use it according to the label. Like five yeah, drops according to the water. label, exactly. You can't overdose on it. And use those okay. after meals as well. Aloe vera juice can be wonderful for the digestive system. You notice we're not even talking skin here. We're talking digestion. And by the way, your skin is your digestive system inside out. They're basically the same kinds of tissue, and it's almost impossible to have a skin problem without having a, an associated digestive problem. And I'm telling you this after observing skin skin care issues for 30 years. So right. uh, so aloe vera juice can coat the digestive system. Noni juice can do it. The Z-Radical from Longevity is one of the best anti uh, a, uh, uh, digestive support supplements as well as immune system supplements you could ever use. Algaes in general can be wonderfully helpful for this. Uh, let's see what else here. Do, 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 oh, as far as topically on the nose, go get yourself Sanitas Topical C. This is a, form, a product I formulated for people who have burns. It's made up with, of fatty vitamin C. Uh, you can Google Sanitas. 
that's S-A-N-I-T-A-S, Topical C, and make sure you use it really sparingly. You can use it for wrinkles as well as for healing burns and cuts and scrapes. And for that sore in your nose, keep it covered up with the Topical C. Uh, you know, we're out of time. There's so much more to talk about, Kathy. We're out of time. If you want to shoot me an email, send it to uh, Ben at ksco.com or, or uh, brightsideletters at gmail.com and uh, put your phone number in there and get back to you personally. Thanks for your call, Kathy. Appreciate it.